Hi friends, we are getting into the third campaign of my summer science series and we're going to kick off the campaign number three with this book all about the metric system. You re may remember that uh, whenever I read a different science book, I would talk about the metric system as the one that scientists use. And so today I thought it'd be a good idea to actually teach you about the one that scientists use, the metric system. Now this particular book, um, it's it's by David A. Adler, which um, he also wrote the ones that we did all of the experiments in. We won't be doing experiments today, but there are some activities in this book that would probably be worthwhile to do in your, to help understand the metric system. Um, so I would suggest that this is a pretty, I guess, dense topic. And so if you're interested in the metric system, I would suggest you going and checking this out at the library or getting it some other way so that you can read through it again or do some of the activities in here. Or you can always just press pause and rewind and watch it again. And eventually you'll get everything that they're trying to tell you. But um, you know, if you don't get it all right away, that's okay. You'll probably learn more about it. This is really just to introduce you to it all and start to further your understanding if you already have some. So here we go. Let's learn about the metric system. It is by David A. Adler, as I mentioned, and illustrated by Edward Miller. Here we go. Here are Jennifer and Robert. That's what their parents named them. That's what their teachers called them. But to their friends, they're Jenny and Bob. Of course, whether you call them Jennifer and Robert or Jenny and Bob, they're the same two people. It's the same with measurement. In the United States, we would say Jenny is about four feet tall. In most other countries, places where the metric system is used, people would say Jenny is about 1.22 meters tall. So four feet and 1.22 meters are just different ways of saying the same thing. In the United States, we would say Bob weighs about 80 pounds. In places that use the metric system, people would say Bob weighs about 36 kilograms. So 80 pounds and a little over 36 kilograms are just different ways of saying the same thing. Linear measure, length and distance. In the United States, when we measure, we mostly use the English system. We measure length in inches, feet and yards. We measure great distances in miles. At first, the foot measure was based on the length of a man's foot. It was divided into 12 inches. The yard was based on the length of the king's arm. The mile on the distance traveled in 1,000 steps. Basing a measure on the length of a man's foot can be a problem. Visit any shoe store and you'll find that shoes come in many sizes. People's feet are not all the same length. The same goes for people's arms. The length of our steps are different too. In 1824, the British Weights and Measures Act set a standard for the length of a foot, a yard, and a mile. In the 1790s, French scientists introduced what was meant to be an easier system of measurement, the metric system. Its units of length are all based on the meter and the power of 10. The metric system was soon used throughout Europe and among scientists everywhere. In the metric system, all measures of length are based on the meter. The most used measures are the centimeter, the meter and the kilometer. Each centimeter is one one hundredth of a meter and each kilometer is a thousand meters. If with the English system, you could use inches to measure this page. It's 10 inches tall and eight inches wide. With the metric system, you would use centimeters. It's 25.4 centimeters tall and 20.32 centimeters wide. It's easy to convert inches to centimeters and centimeters to itch inches. Many rulers, perhaps one of yours, measure inches on one side and centimeters on the other. Here's a ruler right here that has both. Cool. 
If you don't have such a ruler, you can make one. With a copy machine, make a copy of the ruler on the flap of this book. There it is right there. Use safety scissors and an adult supervision to cut out the picture and you'll have a paper ruler with inches on one side and centimeters on the other. With your ruler, measure items in inches and in centimeters. Measure the length of a pencil, sides of a cereal box, the height of a water bottle. Compare the measurements. The pencil may be six inches in English system and slightly more than 15 centimeters in the metric system. Of course, whether you measure the pencil in inches or centimeters, it's the same length. Six inches is slightly more than 15 centimeters. They are just different ways of saying the same thing. With the English system, you would use feet to measure the dimensions of an Olympic sized pool. It's about 164 feet long and 82 feet wide. With the metric system, you would measure it in meters. It's 50 meters long and 25 meters wide. It's easy to convert feet to meters and meters to feet. Maybe you've watched some Olympic swimming this week. Look at the height of some famous landmarks. The Statue of Liberty is 305 feet tall. That would be 93 meters. The Eiffel Tower is 1,063 feet tall. That would be 324 meters. Have you been to any of these landmarks? Been to that one and that one. With the English system, great distances are measured in miles. The distance between Dallas, Texas and Boston, Massachusetts is 1,753 miles. Great distances in the metric system are measured in kilometers. The distance between Dallas, Texas and Boston, Massachusetts is 2,821 kilometers. It's easy to convert miles to kilometers and kilometers to miles. Here's the conversion. Weight. You are surely familiar with some English systems units of weight, ounces, pounds, and tons. There are other less often used measures used, including drams, grains, troy ounces, and long tons. In the metric system, Weights are all based on the gram. The most commonly used metric weights are the gram, the kilogram, which is 1,000, excuse me, grams, and the metric ton, which is 1,000 kilograms. And there's the conversion right down there. 2.2 .2 pounds equals one kilogram. How do English system units of weight compare with metric system units? Go to your pantry. Look at the labels on a can of vegetables, a box of cereal, or a bag of pretzels. They often have both English system weights and metric system weights on the label. Make a list of the English and corresponding metric measurements. Perhaps you could even make a collection of labels when, when the cans, boxes, and bags are empty. If you do, soon you'll be comfortable with both systems of measuring weight. Liquid measures volume. Liquids, water, milk, gasoline, and more are measured by the space they take up, their volume. In the United States, we measure volume in cups, quarts, and gallons. In the metric system, volume is, is measured in liters. Most containers of milk give the measure of its contents in both English system quarts and metric system liters. If, if, a, if it's a full quart, you'll see after the one quart measure that the milk is 0.946 liters. If it's a full liter, you'll see that the one liter measure that it's 1.057 quarts. How much is a liter? A liter is the amount of liquid needed to fill a cube that's 10 centimeters high, 10 centimeters wide, and 10 centimeters deep. The volume of that cube is 1,000 cubic centimeters. Isn't that interesting? You use linear measures to create the cube and volume fills it. Of course, a liter container does not have to be a perfect cube. The shape can be different, but the volume must be 1,000 cubic centimeters. 
There are other measures of volume in the metric system. They are all based on the liter. A milliliter is one one thousandth of a liter. Just that one little block. A centiliter is one one hundredth of a liter. It's the same as 10 milliliters. See, there's 10 there. A deciliter is one tenth of a liter. It's the same as 10 centiliters and 100 milliliters. It's a whole top layer on that guy. One liter, one deciliter is 10 liters. That's not the actual size. So if you have 10 liters, that's a deciliter. A hectoliter is 10 deciliters or 100 liters. And a one kiloliter is 10 hectoliters or 100 deciliters or 1,000 liters. How do English system units of volume compare with metric system units? Find a container of some liquid, look at the label. Most often both English and metric measurements are listed. Make a list of the English and corresponding metric measurements. When the containers are empty, perhaps you can make a collection of the labels. If you do, soon you'll be comfortable with both systems of measuring volume. Okay, they made this little grid where you can put different things here and the metric and English measurement of each. All right, that is the end of that, folks. On the back, there's a whole bunch of quick references. I think this book is super handy because um, not only is there the quick references in the back, but there's also a quick reference table all the way um, on the cover, as well as this handy dandy little ruler. I think rulers are super fun. All right, friends, I hope you had fun learning all about the scientist's way of measuring in the metric system, as well as learning about the English measurement system, which was also in here. What a surprise. Thank you so much for reading with me, friends. Have a great day. Bye.